Hello, my name's Emma and I'm Director of Music at Lancaster Royal Grammar School in Lancashire. We've been a Musical Futures Tech Champion School for a year now and our staff and pupils are really enjoying the opportunities that it offers us. As well as using Ableton in the classroom with all year groups, we also offer one-to-one -one lessons on music production using Ableton and push units, as well as lunchtime sessions which boys access for free. The aims of my department have always been the same. To produce independent learners, musicians in any medium who have the confidence to engage with any musical discipline at any future stage in their lives. I want to give my students the skills and confidence to be lifelong musical learners. We base our curriculum on this principle and it informs all our decision making about what happens both in and out of our music classroom. We all have to look at different things when we design a music curriculum that's right for our students and staff. Some of these may be concerned with looking to the future, filling our exam classes at GCSE, BTEC and A-level. Some may be more concerned with the logistics, lesson length, timetabling, staffing, rooms and resources, but we all have our strengths and we should play to those, thinking about how any of our perceived weaknesses can be tackled in the process. Once we've looked at this, then we can break down the acquisition of skills step by step, lesson by lesson, year by year. My perceived weakness has always been composition. I was never formally taught to compose, so I have always felt as if I was floundering my way through to an end product with students. 20 years of teaching later, I still feel that it maybe isn't a strength, but the process of working it into my curriculum has been incredibly valuable. And working with Ableton over the last few years has really focused in on the skills needed by students at different stages of their learning. Composition is also a perceived weakness in my students. Bright boys who will learn anything, but who are often more comfortable with being told what to do, rather than figuring it out for themselves. As Ableton doesn't use traditional notation, it set free the creativity of students who live in a digital world and allowed them to become much more confident with experimenting with their ideas. It was important to me that I gave them the fundamental skills to be able to explore these properly through Ableton and this informed my integration of Ableton into the curriculum. Year 7 begin their work on Ableton in the spring term after a lot of practical work which encourages them to be brave, to work with others and to always use their ears to inform what they're doing. We decided to begin this with a topic on minimalism a topic that we've traditionally completed in year eight, but we felt was the ideal vehicle to build up the vital skills that they needed on Ableton. First of all, a clapping music project sets them on the path with simple MIDI input, creation of a phase shift, live recording, editing of an arrangement and exporting of audio. We then looked at using the audio manipulation capabilities in Ableton to create a piece based on Come Out and It's Gonna Rain by Steve Reich. This not only gave them experience on Ableton with audio, but allowed them to explore key minimalist techniques such as augmentation, diminution, retrograde, fragmentation, layering and repetition. Their final composition, which was used for their summer exam, was back to MIDI and taught them about structure and textual contrast, as well as incorporating all the techniques learnt so far, both on minimalism and on Ableton. <laughs> Thank you. 
In year eight, we introduce students to the PUSH units. Through our Blues project, we encourage them to use the PUSH as their performance medium for experimenting, improvising, composing, and then transferring their ideas onto Ableton. After an introduction to the topic, which focuses on practical group work and internalization of the key features of the style. Students are asked to arrange the chord and drum patterns given to them and then compose riffs, call and responses and a 12 bar solo, which they're encouraged to perform live, either using the scale function on the push, using their instruments or their voices. Year eights are also given more open performance or improvisation based tasks such as the 64 pad Mad Zach challenge, where they're given time with a partner to prepare a performance track of a minute. This is then performed live to the rest of the class and they get instant feedback from their peers. <laughs> Our year nine curriculum is constrained by our carousel system. So we consciously made a decision to work on practical performance push skills with the freedom to become more creative with the presentation of their final pieces. They begin in pairs and present live manipulation of clips, focusing first on structure and then on using effects racks, which they perform to the class, enhancing their performances and on an often more subtle level, reinforcing the structure of the piece with their placement of effects. presentation in year nine incorporates group work and live instruments and singers with the use of technology. Timing is everything when working alongside technology of any kind and some groups make it look easier than others. Every music department functions outside the classroom, but we made a conscious decision to take our extension learning online in 2011 when we started with our Twitter account. YouTube followed, although lay dormant from until recently, then Facebook and most recently Instagram. This has proved ideal in raising the profile of the department and encouraging students and their families to experience music in their local area or wider afield and listen to music that they may not have considered before, starting cultural conversations in the playground and their homes. 
More formal learning outside the classroom takes place on Focus on Sound and Shobi. Focus on Sound allows us the space to flip our learning, preparing for or following up on our more practical learning experience in the classroom. Shobi allows us to build portfolios of practical learning with easily received and shared feedback from staff and peers. Our YouTube channel has proved invaluable recently, allowing us to support our students more fully during this time of remote learning. We've recorded step-by-step -step lessons for students, not only for those who have taken the advantage of the 90-day free trial of Ableton, but also for those who cannot access this due to IT restrictions at home. So we've extended the project to include GarageBand and Chrome Music Lab SongMaker. Our minimalism compositions are the first to go up, but we're launching our new dubstep composition resources on YouTube next half term. So remote learning for us looks like this. A whole school approach on Teams has proved to be an interesting contrast to our regular use of Shobi. In fact, many of the departments across school are hoping to continue using Teams or other methods of remote learning, even after things return to normal. Your experience of remote learning may be very different to this. You may have no online requirements and limited creative facilities available to your students at home. But as you move forward, perhaps you want to consider what are the things that you want to keep at the heart of your music curriculum. The new normal is anyone's guess. Anyone who's been keeping abreast of research and the recommendations in other countries will know that we may be limited in use of instruments and resources in the school year to come. But limited resources are not necessarily going to limit our curriculum. So moving forward, we may need to think about the following. What's the focus of our curriculum? What are the things that you've missed when you've not been in your classroom? Or what are the things that you're glad you didn't have to teach? What are the things that students have engaged with, surprised you with, or exceeded all your expectations on? How have they made you look at music differently during this time? How can we extend the boundaries of our curriculum outside our usual classroom practice and still maintain the quality of learning that we want our students to achieve? I think the possibilities are endless.